Thank you very much, everybody, for uh, coming down. Um, the initial reaction from everyone was the press conference at Stamford, what's happened, um, but it's just our attempt at, at trying to do things a little bit more professionally as a football club. So um, from our point of view, just a very quick two minutes from me, I'll get the lads in, introduce you. Um, I think they both want to say a little piece themselves, and then it'll just be a case of um, Q&As from the floor. So if um, I could just ask when you ask a question, just to introduce yourself um, for their benefit rather than, rather than mine. Um, but first and foremost, um, Obviously, appreciate you coming at short notice. Um, as I say, a few thank yous. First of all, for Graham Jury. Um, lots been said about Graham's departure, and I'm, I'm well aware of the stories relating to his, his first spell at the football club when I've been told quite a few players sort of departed after him. I think there was an expectation that was going to happen again this time. Um, I think if there's one thing I can say about Graham, he, I hope has served his penance in that respect with the, the squad that he assembled for us during the summer and um, and what they've been able to do in the 20 games that they've been here with putting us in the, the good position that we're in at the moment. So, um, you know, that was uh, important for us as a football club with what Graham's done that we, we now look to build on that with, with the sort of person we felt was capable of moving the club forward to the next level. Um, on that front, obviously, David Staff was appointed as caretaker manager. Um, Staff, he's been fantastic. He's been very thorough, very enthusiastic. All of the things that he is as a player, he's been as a manager. I spent most of my Christmas talking to him, probably more than I did my wife. Um, the only thing I didn't do was get him a Christmas present with everything that was going on. But, um, you know, he, he's been absolutely brilliant at a time when he's got a young family as well. He's just gone with a job. Um, and I think what he's done to hold the dressing room together and the players here should be commended. Um, I'd also like to thank um, all the applicants. Um, I said at the beginning it was an exciting opportunity for us as a football club to bring in um, the right person and I think that the applicants that we had, strength of the experience that they brought as, as different candidates showed us we were received pretty well by the outside world as a decent little football club that uh, people want to be involved with, which for a club that sort of stepped forward is, is quite flattering for us. And the guys that actually made it through to an interview, from our perspective, I think we could have comfortably put any one of those three, four, five guys into the dugout um, and been confident they were going to do a decent job for us. So um, you know, we're obviously grateful for their interest in the club. Um, and that brings us to the final bit, which is why you're all here, which is obviously to go and introduce you to the, the new manager. Just to give you the, the background on it, obviously when, when Graham left, we sat down as a board, we talked about the personal profile, what we felt this new manager would need to do, what the management team would need to have between themselves collectively in terms of a skill set um, in order to take the football club forward. And it was a case of sitting down, finding the best candidate, and here he is right now, Wayne Hatswell, the new manager, and right. David Staff, he's deliberately oh. kept me on my toes a bit all, as our assistant manager. So. Welcome to Hello. both of you, to so the football club officially. Um, as I say, from, from our point of view, we needed to find somebody that matched the, the ambition of the board, where we wanted to take the football club going forward to make sure that what we were doing with a new stadium on the horizon and, and our ambitions was going to be matched by a manager and um, a management team that could take the club forward on it. And as I say, um, fantastic choice of candidates for us, different skills, different types of characters. We were grateful for, for them coming to see us. Um, when it boiled down to it, um, we had a few sleepless nights over it all, when it boiled down to it, we, we felt Wayne was best placed to be the man to lead us forward. And from our point of view, um, Mr Stamford, as I've been told, is, is known as David Staff as uh, big part of that decision process for us because we wanted him to be part of the management team and, and he's embraced the opportunity. Um, so from my point of view, I'm, I'm glad to have both of you alongside me. I think it's quite an exciting management team. Obviously, it's Wayne's first um, opportunity in management and it's a step up for David from being a player. Um, and really, is there anything you guys want to add to that? Um, no, just obviously, thanks for coming today and uh, I'm just looking forward now to uh, meeting the players tonight and uh, the rest of the board, really. And, um, then looking forward to Saturday, but just I just like to say how professional the football club's been, especially Chris. From the minute um, I sent in my CV, um, and that's been a big factor from the very beginning, really. And uh, and I can tell that the I, I like things to be done professionally, and uh, and that's I'm just grateful that they've given me opportunity, hopefully, to succeed at um, Stanford, which is a you know it's a good club. So. Uh, uh, hopefully there's uh, good times ahead. So thank you. Staffy, I said obviously while you're out of the room, you know, what a good thorough job you did for us as a caretaker and obviously to have you as part of the management team, I know something Wayne was very keen on from the moment he walked through for the interviews and certainly I think from the fans' perspective and the boards it's it's good to have you involved. Yeah, and I 
I always felt I think I had, I had a I had a role at this club. I probably wasn't clear myself what it would be, and um, I haven't spoke to Chris after the Kings Lynn game. I I kind of I knew I haven't seen the approach of the players that it's a great opportunity for someone, and I genuinely feel the club and Chris have made an absolutely ideal situation. Uh, uh, they've made a, rock, a great decision for the club going forward. I think. Wayne's in a right place where he's really hungry to go forward. The club is in a position where it's clearly going to go on leaps and bounds. And if I can join that process and learn and encourage things to keep going and get better, I think it's it's an exciting opportunity. And I, I think it's it's the right decision in my eyes for sure. Any questions, guys? Get that notepad out. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, he's got with one. <laughs> Did you play together at Rushton? That's a good start. Did we play together? Yeah. No. No. No, I was, um, what, me and... Staffy. Me and Staffy? Yeah. No, no. no few, few we just, I think, I've, look, we just missed each other, I think. Yeah, and I think there was a few years apart. You, um, yeah, you were before me, I think. As I say, I've, um, I think, perhaps his career has is, is, is been surpassed mine. He's obviously been in the, the higher end of non-league, yeah. as such, and obviously within the league as well, and I've kind You've of... still got time, though. <laughs> 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 I've been around this, but... Uh, I speak to Hats quite a bit over the last few days and speaking to the chairman about it, I think our beliefs are the same. I think we're both quite keen and energetic and, and want the club to le go on leaps and bounds and be a bit more professional than we are. And I think it makes sense. And it was a known brainer for me to, join, to get involved uh, with Hats. And it's, as I say, it's exciting for the club, I think. Wayne, uh, Simon yep. was Bruce Cambridge here. Um, How are you? Alright mate, are you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Um, have you always wanted to get into managing or is yeah. something that you've sort of thought about towards the end of your career? Um, it's something I've been thinking about for probably about four or five years. Probably since my um, my my late Cambridge days really. Um, I, I remember the day that, that I left Cambridge United and, uh, and that was a probably a pivotal moment for me because I went abroad to Dundalk and, and that was my first steps into being an assistant manager. Um, it was a massive learning curve for me and uh, I, lo I loved every minute of it and it was, a, it was a good time in my career. I felt I was still playing you know, relatively quite well and for me to learn all these things while I was still playing at a good standard, um, I thought right one, one, and then I knew once my days had come that I couldn't carry on as as well as I had been. Um, then I knew I'd be one too far away from knocking on the door for, to a club that would go, look, give give me a chance, um, and, and I'll and I'll take it. That's that's that was the way. But I've learnt my, I've gone along. I've learnt my trade. You know, I've had a long, long career playing wise. But even behind the scenes at certain clubs where I've been, um, even just a player, I've done. I've done other stuff, coaching. I've gone, I've gone down the right, the right roads. Picked up a lot, learned from managers, learned from uh, all types of people and along the way. And uh, you know, there, there's good things, bad things. But you know, they make mistakes. I'll probably make mistakes. But um, I've learned from a lot of them over the years, and I think it's come to a point now where I, the right time came for me. I, I, I wanted to leave Brackley because I felt. I couldn't keep going on playing anymore. I didn't. I didn't like the thought of that anymore, and um, I had to come out of playing to try and get an opportunity to manage a football team, and uh, obviously, hence getting the chance today, which is, you know, I'm overjoyed about really, and uh, you know, it's a good club, and obviously, being local to Cambridge, I'll um, I'll have to have a word with a few there, see if we can get a few of their players. You never know, but yeah. they're doing they're doing really well at the moment, aren't they? Do you look back at anyone in particular as a particular influence for you wanting to go into management? Um, everyone always asks who's the best manager that I played under. Um, I always used to say, well, I, I always say Jan Mulby. Um It was just the way that he handled players. Um, I think he got frustrated because he was such a good player. It was he couldn't believe that certain players at our level, you know, League Two, whatever it was, that we couldn't do. The simple things that he found easy, and uh, I, and I see that from the very beginning, and uh, that's one thing that I've learned over the years. Don't get frustrated, because that's just you know, it's just playing. No one makes means to make a mistake, you know. What playing now? I've made many at, at playing, and uh, it's I've learned a lot from 
nearly every manager that I've played under, I've always tried to analyse them a little bit, see how they coach, see what, you know, take a little bit each week. It's a little portfolio, really, that I've tried to get together for when I knew that I was going to hopefully need it. And, uh, you know, obviously, that's, that's the, hopefully my time has come and I, I want to grab it with both hands. And, you know, and I've I got good people around me and I've inherited a good side. Um, you know, so that the, the players have done really well so far to get where they are. And, you know, we, we need to just push on a little bit more now. We've got 20 games left. Who knows, you know, we've got we've got a bit of a def deficit to peg back, but everybody knows in football, weeks a long time and uh, a couple of games all of a sudden it can all open up. But, you know, we start Saturday, we've got a tough game, but um, if I think if we can come away Saturday with a good positive result, um, it would do everybody the world of good and uh, it would do my wife the world of good that she might be able to get some sleep. <laughs> Uh, Chris Meadows from Active Magazine. Oh, yeah. what, what are your plans for the rest of the season with regards to where you think you can get the team to? Do you think they can win the league? Uh, we've got to, got to try and strive for that, haven't we? Um, like I say, we're only, we're only 11 points behind. I know we've got a few games in hand on Sutton Coalfield and uh, really they probably should drop away, but they're up there for a reason. And Kings Lynn at the weekend, obviously, the they had a positive result against us and uh, they'd be thinking that they can put a good run together towards the end of the season. So it's, I think there's a long way to go. Like I said, there's, there's 60 points available for us to, to take and I wouldn't say how many wins we might need to do that, but we've obviously, we can't really afford to drop many, many more anyway and uh, hopefully if we're in a right frame of mind over the next next few months you never know where you could be and uh, I'm not going to say yeah we are going to get promoted because it's, it's not that easy is it I know, I know for a fact you can be you can be winning the league all year and then things can go drastically wrong but you know we just got to keep plugging away and hopefully um, the players will be giving their all to, to try and try and get up that league and uh, finish top but if we don't we don't That's the, we, it won't be for the want to try and anyway put it that way and more long term view, where where do you see yourself taking the club? Do you see it you, you being at the new ground when it, when the club finally moves moves across to there as well? And oh, I hope so. Yeah, it's the if you got a crystal ball, then then great. But you know, it's a results business, isn't it? And uh, I'm under no illusions. All these managers that I played under, we didn't get results. They got the sack. So that's the that's the nature of the beast. And uh, um, hopefully that won't happen to me. And I can use it hopefully to stay with the club and do really well and see the new ground coming in. There's, there's a lot going on behind the scenes that are looking very, very rosy. And uh, But, you know, we need to do well on the football pitch first and foremost. So, and that's my, that's mine and Dave's responsibility with a little bit of help from from Chris. I'll say a little bit. Oh, Quite a bit. <laughs> a bit, yeah. Uh, that's the challenge we've got. Uh, I mean, to, to sort of ask him what his expectations are. At the moment, I think it's... Um, one of them, we, we need to put a business plan together, which is what we're doing at the moment, centered around the new ground. Um, and if we can match that up with what your own personal ambitions are as a, a team, where you think you can take the players, then you know there, there is no limit to, to where we might go. It's just a difficult to answer that at the moment. But I think the exciting thing for us is, is that the, the new stadium's on the horizon, and that brings a hell of a lot of opportunity because it attracts different calibers of players to what we've probably been able to before. Um, and the aim for us was to appoint a management team that would be the managers in the, the, the new dugout at the new stadium and also to, to at least be a step above where we are right now and that's that's Wayne's challenge and, and David's challenge over the next little while is if this is not this season you know let's let's learn from as much as we can do over the next 20 games to make sure we're ready for next season um, but yeah there's no pressure um, just few only, more, from, few, only few, from myself and that's yeah, it yeah a few more wins than uh, yeah. what we've already got is um, is the expectations putting himself really